next we're going to jump in and talk about the third component perseverance so when we talk about perseverance, what I want you to think in mind is this goal oriented behavior that you're going to commit to a challenge. And it's the idea that it's going to be a big challenge, but you're going to push through. So people high in perseverance, they are going to commit to these challenges. They don't give up, they don't flake away, and they will go and do something extraordinary. So this might be completing a university de degree program. It might be getting to the top of your career ladder. It might be becoming a parent. It might be rehabilitating after a car accident. It could be anything small or large, but it's a hard challenge that takes a long time. And so long time could be a duration of months or a duration of years. So I want you to think about perseverance as we're going to climb a mountain. It's not an easy mountain to climb, and the people who persevere are the ones that are going to succeed at it. So in order to climb the mountain, we need three subcomponents of perseverance. And I'm going to call those for this course grit, adaptability, and prudence. So the first subskill to climb the mountain is grit. And so grit is actually named by Angela Duckworth. Uh, and so she believed grit had two pieces, that you don't give up and that you're really passionate about the project. So perseverance is the idea you don't give up and passion is the idea you really care, you're really going to put all you have into it. Interestingly, Duckworth believed that you shouldn't be passionate about too many things, that having a more narrow focus would help you to persevere. And so she believed that people had lots of widespreading passions or lots of different ideas and they could shift their, shift their focus from year to year. She would actually consider them to be lower in grit. And she believed to be higher in grit, you had to stick to one target. That's been criticized in her theory because the idea that some people might just loop back, they might actually be the most, uh, most gritty because they can maintain uh, lots of different boiling pots at once. It's also been argued that her definition of grit tended to really focus on people of high socioeconomic status and not low socioeconomic status, where in low, sometimes you have to put your dreams on hold to face real world obstacles in your face right now. So the theory definitely has been criticized. Another way we can think about grit is through using words like growth mindset versus fixed mindset. So these were coined by Carol Dweck. And Dweck believed that a fixed mindset is the idea, I'm not good at this. I'll never be good at this. Here's my personality and I'll always be this way. Versus a growth mindset was, I'm not good at this today, but that could change. My personality is this right now, but that could change. So do I believe that we always have the opportunity to grow and develop in adulthood? It's been shown that your personality can change throughout life if you do enough hard work and that skill sets can change. And she, so she really put forward the idea that what you're bad at today may not be what you're bad at tomorrow. And so mistakes are good. It's the idea that making mistakes and failing actually helps us to learn, it grows synapses in our brain. And so mistakes can actually help our brain to grow and help us to flourish. And so people that are higher in grit tend to be higher in self-efficacy. They believe they can do it. They believe they have the power to be their own superheroes. And it's the idea that talent should take a backseat to effort. This is the idea that someone who's bored with big muscles uh, is not going to be as strong as someone who worked for those big muscles and went to the gym multiple times a week. So the effort is really more powerful than the talent. And so it's like the farmer's idea that what you plant in the spring is what you harvest in the fall. You have to put the effort in to see that gain. So in terms of our mountain climber metaphor, the skill that helps you here is when you're hiring grit, you're going to persevere, you're going to try. And when you're struggling on the mountain, you're not going to give up. You're going to believe, okay, I made a few mistakes. I can still go. And even though climbing the mountain right now is difficult, it's going to get better. I can develop the skills. And you know that climbing the mountain requires effort, not just talent. So that's why grit is really important. But the second component of perseverance is adaptability. So adaptability, another word for it is really resilience. Instead of just having a growth mindset, it's the idea that you'll actually attempt to change and grow. This is the idea that if you're climbing the mountain and your first couple strategies don't work, you realize you have to pivot. You realize you have to change the, the idea and say, okay, this, this plan is not gonna work out. We need to adapt. We need to make some changes. Another component of adaptability is optimism. So this is the glass half full versus glass half empty strategy. It's the idea when you're looking at life, you may look at life through rose colored lenses. You look at things with more hope and with less despair, you're less likely to panic and see doom and gloom. It can be super hard when the news is all just full of doom and gloom, but you're hopeful that there will be another side to every dark tunnel. And so this is the idea that your adaptability helps you to say, well, it's not always going to be like this because you're able to change and pivot. You understand that everything is temporary and even the dark times are temporary. The, the good times are temporary and we need to hold on to them while we have them and cherish them, but the dark times are temporary as well and you can get through it. 
And finally, with this adaptability comes a bit of humility. So humility is the, is the lack of loss of pride or loss of shame. So pride is when you're really hung up on when you win and shame is when you're really hung up when you lose versus humility is when you have that self-actualization or self-acceptance that you know that you're gonna have good days and bad and you know that these external validation measures don't mean anything. You can internally validate yourself and when you reflect on yourself, you know you're a good person, you know you're doing your best. And so that's what adaptability really is. You feel confident in yourself. You feel like you trust yourself. You're not worried about what other people think about you or if they brag about you or if they critique you and you keep going. And if something's not working, you're not ashamed to pivot and change because you don't have a lot of pride hung up in the matter. And finally, the third component of perseverance is prudence. And so prudence can really be akin to responsibility. So people that are high in prudence, they engage in more responsible decision making. So in terms of the climbing the ladder, uh, if grit was that you're just going to keep trying, if adaptability is you'll pivot your strategy, well, prudence is that you pack the right gear in your backpack before you got on the mountainside. So this is the idea that you had a more future goal orientation. You planned ahead. This is the idea you don't get just hung up on short-term goals or immediate hedonistic tendencies, but you think about what you want to do in the long term. You think about where you're going and you think about where you want to be someday. So people higher in prudence, they tend to be more reliable. They tend to be more dependable, which is why I put a dog on here. Dogs are so dependable and they are going to be more high in conscientiousness. They're gonna do the follow through and they're gonna do the work required. And so they, they think ahead of time, they do all the planning before they get on the mountain and they plan, they strategize, they look at the weather route, they look at the avalanche report and they make sure they have all the training before they even start. So those are really the three components of perseverance.